now in this session we will begin with the uh, first major thinking skill that is uh, first major skill required for research that is thinking so we'll discuss uh, aspects of thinking such as problem solving uh, critical thinking and creativity so uh, in this lecture you will get uh, answers to questions like is thinking skill inborn or can i develop it in how many different ways can i think and how can i develop my thinking and generate ideas so the last part is the prescription for developing thinking let us take the first question is thinking skill inborn or can i develop it um, answer to this question is uh, crucial because if uh, thinking skill is entirely inborn then there is not much point in uh, talking about it in detail and teaching because it is not going to serve any purpose so only if there is some significant aspect of this uh, thinking which can be developed by practice okay a skill is something that you can develop by practice so unless there is an element in it which can be developed by practice it is not worth uh, <coughs> discussing about it in great detail so let us see what research has to say on this question so let us take the highest uh, thinking skill that is creativity people have done research on this particular uh, topic in last 50 years in psychology so these are some of the uh, conclusions from that research so first one is a statement by peter medever he has not done formal research on uh, thinking process but this is uh, the conclusion from his own experience creativity is beyond analysis this statement is a romantic illusion we must now outgrow that is what he says the next two statements are conclusions of psychological research creativity is a skill which can be developed by practice conscious application is needed not the vagaries of inspiration in order to achieve a creative output so it is wrong to think that uh, these flashes of brilliance or inspiration uh, they come without any control to a person it is true that there is some amount of uncertainty on the timing of these flashes okay but apart from that there is a certain kind of preparation that a mind should have for these flashes and this preparation can be done by practice look at the last statement creativity is a matter of organizing one's basic skills not regretting that one was not born with a quick or logical mind so since uh, conclusions of research uh, are encouraging it is worth looking at this uh, particular aspect of thinking in detail so that we may learn some lessons on how we can develop our own thinking so what is crucial it has been recognized for high level of thinking is motivation this is again a conclusion of a psychologist by name cox who studied uh, the biographies and personal interactions with 301 geniuses so he has written the conclusion as follows motivation is a recognized uh, motivation is recognized as a crucial factor in the development of talent and the application of creativity the importance of intrinsic motivation in driving an individual to practice and work hard to master a specific domain is undisputed cox in his study of 301 geniuses wrote high but not the highest intelligence combined with the greatest degrees of persistence will achieve greater eminence than the highest degree of intelligence with somewhat less persistence so you look at this conclusion carefully it is an example of conclusion of a scientific study okay here the all the words are weighed very carefully he says high but not the highest intelligence combined with the greatest degrees of persistence will achieve greater eminence than highest degree of intelligence with somewhat less persistence that is the result of a study so what he is saying is if you study a large a number of people who are characterized as genius then it is found that it is they do not necessarily possess the highest intelligence 
they do have a certain level of intelligence, but not the highest. But what they have is a very high level of persistence. That is what the statement is saying. So what is the difference between a genius and an average person, or a famous scientist and the average scientist? It is not in the level of intelligence. It is not that much in the level of intelligence. The difference lies in the level of persistence. Ability to concentrate on one thing for a very long time, in spite of any difficulty. So this motivation uh, is crucial for any significant achievement. Let us take up the next, next question. In how many different ways can I think? So we'll discuss this with several examples. In this context, a quotation of Aurobindo is of uh, great significance. What he has said is, education is not about learning diverse subjects. Education is not about learning diverse subjects, but about learning diverse ways to the same subject. It is about learning diverse ways to the same subject. It is not about learning diverse subjects. Unfortunately, a lot of our education is about learning diverse subjects. Okay? And that is one of the reasons why Aurobindo at least says that people are not creative to the same extent as we would like even after going through an educational process. Because it focuses on diverse subjects. So, in our syllabus, we give emphasis to different topics that need to be covered. We don't spend time or discuss at length how the same thing can be done in several different ways. So an example of that would be, let us say we are teaching Pythagoras theorem. Now we can teach one or two ways of proving, which is what is normally done. How do you prove Pythagoras theorem? And then we move on to the next theorem. Why? Because it is important for us to discuss several theorems in the course. That is what the curriculum says. But if you want to develop creativity or develop higher levels of thinking, it will be more appropriate to discuss 10 different ways of proving Pythagoras theorem. Okay? Rather than discussing 10 different theorems, it will be more useful to discuss 10 different ways of proving Pythagoras theorem. Okay? That is what is the meaning of this kind of, this particular statement. So this point we will uh, develop in further detail. So let us see how many different ways we can do things. So to start with, let us look at the levels of thinking. The lowest level is knowing or memory. Uh, I have said this in introduction, I am repeating it here. Next higher level comes comprehension or understanding. Next higher level is application or problem solving. Then evaluation or critical thinking and finally creativity. To appreciate these various levels of thinking, we will now do an activity. So I will uh, give you a simple looking problem which you can attempt and I will give you 10 minutes time. It is quite possible that within the 10 minutes you may not get a solution. But at the end of 10 minutes, what we are going to discuss is how different people are approaching this problem. So I will uh, call upon a few students to come here and uh, just talk about what is the way they are approaching this problem. And it will be a very interesting study. We will see how different people approach a problem in different ways. The problem is the following. Problem is make five squares of equal size out of a single large square. You are allowed to cut and paste. So imagine that you are given a square piece of paper and you are given a scissor. Nothing else. A square piece of paper and a scissor. And you are asked to divide this square piece of paper into five equal squares. So you are dividing the square piece of paper into five e parts and all the five parts should be equal and each of the parts should be a square. Please understand this very carefully. You have to divide a square piece of paper into five parts. All the five parts should be equal in size and all the five parts should be square. Okay? So I am repeating the same question in different ways because uh, people have doubts. They think that the question is divide one paper into five equal parts. 
That is not the question. The given paper is a square paper. And you have to divide this into five equal squares. Five equal squares. All parts should be square size. So I will give you 10 minutes time. OK? Just try it. Uh, your question was, uh, is it minimum five or you can divide into more parts? Yes, you divide into as many parts as possible, but ultimately you must join the parts such a way that you get five equal parts. So you should get five equal parts, but you can divide into as many parts. So for example, if you think you have a strategy where you you'll divide into 100 some parts, and then you will join 20 parts into one square, another 20 parts into another square, and so that ultimately you will get <coughs> five squares. Right? That is what is meaning of the statement, you are allowed to cut and paste. You cut into as many parts as possible, and you can paste different uh, um, sizes of the paper and so on. Okay, so let me show this diagrammatically before you start. So this is your square piece of paper. <coughs> what I want is ultimately you should have five papers like this. So you can see each of these five papers is a square. And if I add up the areas of these five papers, I should get the area of the bigger square. OK? So that is the question. You can divide this uh, paper into as many parts as possible. And if you want, then you can go on joining, you know, and then make one square then make another square like that, you know, that you are allowed. <coughs> now just think about it. Here, uh, actually, I assume uh, square as 5a by 5a. So these are five parts. <laughs> so each part has length a. So its area is 25a square. OK. So here. Uh, we want so just square. show that uh, each side is 5A. You can just show on the diagram. Okay. 5A. Huh. 5A. Right. So here, we want uh, 5 squares having areas each of 5A square. So finally, we want a square having sides root 5A by root 5A. OK. Now, uh, there is a method hmm. to get a, uh, this length root 5. I will just uh, show it. Yeah. If we plot uh, a distance phi from this point, let's say this is phi, and if we take a, okay, let's say phi a, then if we take uh, a more uh, distance of a from this end point, and uh, if we take uh, the center of this length 6a, let us say this a is b c. And if you take a center of AC as O, and if you plot a uh, half circle having O as a radius, uh, sorry, a center, then if you draw a vertical from B, which will uh, cut the half circle at, let us say, D, then BD is, uh, length BD will be equal to root 5A, because length OD will be 3A. Uh, length uh, OB will be 2A because it is center of length AC which is 6A. So uh, 9A square minus 4A square which is 5A square. So DB would be root 5A. Hmm. So in this way, in this figure, I can have uh, a distance of 3A from this point and... Uh, 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 the 3A will not be in the middle. Sorry, sorry. Huh. Okay. Doesn't matter. Okay. You show it a uh, little bit up. Okay. Yeah. It will be 3A from here. Hmm. So. You show that 3A. That distance is 3A. Okay. So this is 3A. Hmm. So I can draw a half circle here and uh, uh, where this length would be then root 5A. As per the, uh, as per 
BD, length okay. BD. Okay. Okay. Then uh, now I got the length root 5A. Hmm. So I will cut uh, this uh, 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 square into five parts. Now uh, let us take a, a part having length 5A by A. Now I know the length root 5A. So I will cut, uh, means I will take a length from here, let us say A, A to B. A, B is root 5A. Then I know also a length A, C, which is uh, root 5A, where uh, C is a point. Then I will try to fit uh, this, the, then I will cut this part and, and I will try to fit it here. Let us see how you do that. It will come like this way. Hmm. Then I will again cut this part. No, it won't come like that. You see your area, this appears much bigger than this. Yeah, I mean, actually uh, I have drawn a wrong yeah, yeah, no. figure. Okay, so let us draw it to scale. Because you, when you draw it to scale, you will know where is the difficulty. So this is root 5a, okay. a, b, and put this part here. In so actually, incidentally, your root 5a, uh, will it be more or less than half of 5a? More than. Because? Yeah. No, no. Half of uh, 5 less, is 2.5, so 2.5 square is 6.25. Okay, it is. So it will be less than half. So okay. let us show it as less than half. Okay. Right, okay. It will be here. In fact, as we will discuss in problem solving, drawing diagram to scale is an important part of okay. solving problems. We'll discuss it later. So, length AB is root 5A. Right. Uh, then, I know a part uh, uh, length C, which is equal to AB here. Right. Then I will try to fit uh, huh. the... So, that is the now the important question. The how will you fit it? the remaining part? It is true that in terms of area, it is all right. But how will you get a square? But uh, here, uh, I will have to do a lots of cutting so after n number of cuttings and again uh, uh, yes it the question is by doing any number of cuttings will you be able to get uh, it is quite correct on your part that you need a square of side root 5a mm -hmm. point number one that is you are right you also shown how you can get root 5 geometrically yes. that part also is good it is correct but now how do you apply this information to the given situation and actually get five squares that is where there seems to be some difficulty yeah Right? At that yeah. stage. I will have to have infinite cuttings and again ah, But the moment that. you say infinite, then it is not a yeah. practical solution. Yeah. It doesn't matter, you have come up to some point. Right? Let us see. Let us have one more example. Okay. That will tell us how different people are thinking. And then we will discuss <coughs> the various levels of thinking. Keep it like that. Right? Basically, our output should be a square of root 5 each. Root 5 each. Okay. Right. Okay. This is say uh, 5 and my output will be 5 each. So what I done, done is basically, I first method is basically I thought of divide into 4 equal parts. Right. Okay. And uh, this square is actually of 2.5 each. Hmm. My this thing is actually root 5. Hmm. So approximately you can actually... Incidentally, again if you draw it to scale, you should show less than half of this. Oh, okay, then this is fine. Now it is to scale. So yeah. basically, if I cut this, hmm. I get four equal parts of this. Ah, so approximately, uh, uh, I have no, this. Cut, cut which one? No, basically, I need to approximately cut it, not exactly. Okay. So this length is actually 2.5 minus root 5. Okay. So this is not actually exactly correct. Hmm. So I have this approximately root 5 and the rest, and I have four parts of this kind. Right. So, so you I have, have huh. to manage by cutting it and... Yeah, now that is the question. Now, can you... A remaining part in terms of area it is correct but can you still get a square yeah, by joining the remaining part that again has to be by cutting many parts hmm. and one more thing i have done is uh, huh. I'll do so uh, one of the things that you gather from here is if you try to cut parallel to the sides in any number of uh, different ways where the cuts are parallel to the sides there seem to seems to be a difficulty okay you can gather that you know you are going up to a point and then getting stuck. Yeah. Let us see your other approach. Basically, in this, what I did was 
I have a This is square i divided into five five parts for uh, grid size of five five cross five. Okay. Okay. So basically, I need a size of root five. Yes. So if I locate it here, this is my root five. This is your root five. This part is root five. Uh, can you just explain how it is oh, root five? Okay. This is one. This part is actually root five. Uh, this is root five. This is two and this is one. Okay. Good. So this is root five. Okay. So if I extend it, hmm. this is not actually looking like a square, but hmm. if you extend it this way, this is actually a square again. Hmm. This is square. Mm -hmm. When I got two two squares of root five each. Root okay. Root five cross root five. Hmm. Okay. And uh, the remaining part is this. Hmm. What I do is I extend again this part. Uh, this is what are this kind okay mm -hmm. this is not exactly coming out this my diagram is poor so so the remaining part also i, I actually uh, i've done it better in my this thing but fine uh, you Basically, want to take a look at what you have done and just yeah. put it back no diagram is not actually proper i'm uh -huh. not actually getting draw redraw it properly okay so Today it was basically I got squares of size five, uh, root five cross root five again. Okay. And the remaining uh, approximately are somewhat close to that. But basically I have triangles left out. Mm -hmm. so you can manage out and put them back in the remaining uh, three. Mm -hmm. I can actually get uh, somewhat near. Yes. So you have to put the triangles together and then get a square. Yeah. Again, now can you get a square only from triangles? So this is a new approach where you are trying to get now you abandon dividing into smaller squares and then getting squares out of the squares. Instead of that, now you are going to a triangle. It's a change in paradigm, right? Change in way of looking at it and you seem to be getting closer and closer. Okay. Basically, I have used triangles to construct a square. Okay. So, uh, I took a square. And again, uh, I joined the midpoints of you know, each of the sides. Okay, so roughly. Uh, Okay. And then, uh, then again, I join the uh, midpoints of the inner uh, square that is formed. Okay. And if I cut it out, uh, each triangle, this triangle, this triangle, mm -hmm. it will construct a square. One, uh, one square will be formed by this. Mm -hmm. Another will be by this. Mm -hmm. uh, the third one will be by this. Fourth one, and this will be mm -hmm. the fifth one. So, uh, this is an interesting approach where you are getting five squares. Now, question is, are they of equal size? Actually, three, three are, uh, means three are of equal size. Three are of different size, size, right? So yeah. that is where the, there is a problem, yeah. okay? So size, that is why I said, you know, each of these conditions should be okay. satisfied. Okay, but you are getting different squares, but not of equal size. Yeah, okay. okay, good. Uh, for the square which I need, my target square, the five such squares, so each side will be root five, as one of our friends did. So. So now, uh, these are the four squares which I get. Okay. Okay, of equal size. Now I have these strips remaining. Hmm. And okay. that corner strip also. And this one also. Ah. Okay, so now the dimensions of these are, uh, this root 5 is 2.23. Whatever, size. Huh? Okay, and uh, this is about a 0.528. Huh. So this square that is... That is 5 minus 2 root 5. Yes. 0.528 and 0.528. Okay. Now, uh, if I take out all this mm -hmm. and place it one above the other, this is my So, one a, side B, you will get root C, 5, B. that is clear. Yeah. But so what about is, the other side? This is root 5 and this is 4 into 0.528, that is 2.111. Mm -hmm. 
Hmm. Okay. So now this strip hmm. has to be cut into few parts hmm. so as to be added over here. Hmm. That so is the now issue. So How will you do that? So, uh, so this again, this is a square, so I can cut it into yes. few Yes. Any number of parts you cut? No. Uh, so if I take this extra dimension as A okay. or whatever, A, hmm. so A into this length, that hmm. is root 5, hmm. that is 2.236. Okay. So A into 2.236 is equal to uh, root 5 square. Fine. You can evaluate A from there. So, yeah. Now, how will you get that uh, A in practice? is the question from that. So because ultimately, in practice, you have to uh, basically cut this square into pieces and then join those pieces so that you get this strip. Yes. Now, that is a question. Is it possible? Uh, yeah. In terms of area, it looks okay. Yeah. But practically, you, sh you should show how you will cut. A is 0 0.125. Huh. How will you, so how will you get, uh, so the, it boils down to now, your problem boils down to, you have a square piece like this, and you should get a strip, thin strip. Hmm. Area of this thin strip is same as this. That is fine. Question is, how do you cut this in any number of parts and join them so that you get this strip? We can cut with the side of 0.125. Yeah, how you, no, no. But how will you cut this so that you will get one side 0.125 and then all other things you are joining them together so that you get a root 5 on the other side? Why not? Yeah, think about it. I, is it possible? I think that should be possible. Well, I mean, one may say, look, I will stretch so that I will go on stretching until one side reduces. But then you can't stretch paper, right? In principle, one can uh, use such methods. But that is not possible here. So here the method is you have to cut and paste. That is the only way. So is it possible to cut a square piece and join so that you get a strip like this? This becomes another problem. Like dividing a square piece of paper into five equal parts. So you have to see whether it has a solution at all. This problem, I'm not saying the original problem. Okay. Yeah. Okay, you think about it. Yeah. So I start with the rectangles first. Okay. Suppose we have a rectangle like this. One would like to see how we can form a square out of this. Okay, how do you form a square from a rectangle? Oh a partial square with a hole. This is rectangle with a hole. Okay. Oh, sorry, square with a hole. Yes. These are filled areas. Okay. And this is the hole. Hmm. Suppose the this is of breadth A mm. and length L. Mm. So, the total area of the occupied spaces will be 4 into A L. The, uh, the shaded area. Oh, sorry. Yes. The shaded, shaded area is 4 into A L. Four. This is the area. Mm. And the area uh, which is empty is L minus A square. Okay. So, now what we need is uh, can we, uh, we need to construct, we need, suppose there are five such parts hmm. like this. Okay. So, this will be 20 A L plus 5 into L minus A whole square. Okay. This, we want it to be a square of this. This you want to be? A square of certain area, N square. Oh, N square. Okay. N square. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, if we can find out uh, the length A, L, mm. uh, suppose if we can find it in, in terms of integer, mm. then it is easy to do. Yeah, but uh, this is nothing. On the left hand side, it is nothing but this is A yes. and uh, this is L. So, your total area is nothing but L plus A square, total area if you take. Yes. Now, if you add these two, <laughs> that is what you are doing and then you are multiplying it by? Five. five. So, we want so this is nothing but yes. five into L plus A square. Yes. So you are saying five into L plus A square is equal to N square. Yes. So what do you get from here? No, from here we need to find lengths A and L. Mm. Uh, we need to cut this. Uh, 
into strips of length a and l to okay. make this piece ha huh. so how are you getting um, so basically you are having five such pieces is it yes sir we want to make five such things we need to cut oh, no you want to make five such things yes so out of this given single square so which means for preparing um, uh, constructing each square you will need four such rectangles yes. and One. and a piece inside yes square yes so we need five small squares hmm. and then 20 rectangles right so how will you get those that we need solution of this yeah you may get a solution solution means practical solution you should show how it can be cut right. and see whether it is possible to cut hmm. see that i don't know how it can be done hmm. you have to try it okay yeah we take the midpoints of each of these sides okay and connect the vertices this way okay this is first one mm -hmm. this is another line third line by symmetry again okay fourth line this way so now this will be one square mhm mm and let's say let's call this as a mhm mm b c d mm -hmm. And you can uh, draw show parts now you can number the parts maybe and then it will be easy for you okay uh, let's call it as p1 p2 p3 p4 for the inner square hmm now a p1 b a p1 b this area hmm is repeated four times correct so we just need to show that this can be made into a square correct now since these two lines are parallel mm -hmm. and this divided by this the ratio is the same for this is 1 is to 2 this mm -hmm. whole thing this this unit divided by the total length is 1 is to 2 correct therefore this distance will be half of this okay and uh, since this is a square this is 90 degrees mm -hmm. this whole thing this inner the small triangle can be rotated about this point mm -hmm. so we get a square like this hmm. similarly it can be done for the other four parts okay so that is right now uh, you have to show that all these are equal parts you got five squares okay at least these these four outer parts will be equal mm -hmm. ha four outer yes. parts are equal that's very clear yes let us take this triangle a let's call this point as let's say x Hmm. A D X, and there are two lines coming out like this. <coughs> If you concentrate only on this triangle, okay. D, yes. D P C. Right. So let us draw that triangle separately. Yes. So you have a triangle. So this this would be half of this. Hmm. So, but this part is here also. Correct. So this whole length can be written as uh, let's call this as some a or something. Hmm. So this is two a. Hmm. And now if you concentrate on this triangle. Mhm. Mm the same as that triangle whatever. All these four triangles you have said yeah. Are same. Okay. Um you are you are almost you are almost there. Okay. What remains is to prove that all parts are now equal. Yeah. Four parts are equal to each other that is clear. You should show that the fifth part also is equal to the other four. So what remains to be shown is that the square obtained by this is the same as is the same as the square obtained from any one of the triangles by putting this triangle on this side yeah. that is all what remains to be shown okay so um, yes you can think about it that's fine yeah, you take your time right because as i said um, here we, it is not necessary to get to the solution but the approach is important right so i mean he has got the solution but he has to prove it 
basically i said uh, i this is my pi cross phi square correct this is my pi cross phi square correct okay so i divided into lines of root phi each yes so this is one square i got hmm these are my two squares correct and these are three three parts good this is the third part okay hmm. one two and three hmm this a b and c okay uh, are three which i i got not perfect squares okay fine so this is root 5 root 5 2 okay mm. and this is root 5 and 2 uh, and 1 so i take this square and adjust it here yes and this one here mm. now i have to adjust this remaining part mm. in these two squares mm. so one can repeat that yeah. yes so i i extend this line cut this way mm. i have root 5 and this can be bought here so I can actually bring this area here. Okay. I have this area remaining. Hmm. I can actually adjust it here in this small part. Right. So this area can be put it here. Okay. So this is my five squares, one, two, three, four. Good. That's another solution. Where you divide into triangles and squares. And then you join the triangles and the squares to get other squares. So, uh, suppose we have this length root five. We got this length root 5. Root 5, root 5. Similarly, here, root 5, root 5. Right. So I just draw these lines. Now, incidentally, how did you get. Oh, I see. Suppose we, mm -hmm. we get this root 5. I, I mean, somehow you are getting yeah. it. Yeah, root 5 by construction. Huh. But you, later on you have to explain how will you actually put it on a square piece, right? That also you have to explain because you have a square and a scissor. Okay. <coughs> so how will you measure? But let us see now. Okay. Supposing so you have that. So this root 5 root 5 means we have two squares. And now this middle area is remaining. Correct. So here also again we measure the length root 5, mm -hmm. root 5, root 5 and root 5. Okay. So we got these four strips hmm. and this center square. Mm -hmm. This this area is phi minus two root five. Hmm. Similarly, this is phi minus two root L five. Uh, not area, the side. Oh, sorry, length. Side, huh. Length. Hmm. And these are four strips. And okay. This, again, this square hmm. phi minus two root five. Hmm. Square. Hmm. Each length is phi minus two root five. Right. So we divide into four strips. Okay. So it will be phi minus two root five divided by four. No, 5 minus 2 root 5 is length. Yeah, hmm. so this length, I mean this middle square. Right, you divide. Uh, 5 minus 2 root 5. So we divide it into 4 strips. Right, so width of the strip is 5 minus 2 root 5 by 4. 5 by 4. Okay. Now we join this strip to each square, uh, I mean to this each rectangle. So each How? rectangle huh. is 5 minus 2 root 5. This was root 5 and this was, this is 5 minus 2 root 5. Okay. So we we just join this strip here, two one, then two ah, one. If you join like that, hmm. then one side will become more than root yeah, five. Yeah, yeah. It will be five plus five minus two root five divided by four, hmm. which will be nothing but five plus two root five hmm. divided by four. Hmm. Now we have four such strips. So multiply by four, and their breadth is five minus two root five. So this will be cancelled. This is five by twenty five hmm. minus two into this is twenty. So this is five. Area is five. No, area is 5, but, but how are you getting the square? So, so this strip is attached here. Okay. So, to next strip, again this strip is attached here. Hmm. Third strip, this strip is hmm. attached here. Hmm. Fourth strip, this strip is attached here. Hmm. So, if you do that, hmm. now the length of this side is more than root 5. Hmm. And length of this side will obviously be less than root 5. No, this will be 2, 5 minus 2 root 5. Huh, this side. Huh. So, 5 minus 2 root 5 multiplied by 4. This. Huh, whatever it is. So, now this side and huh. this side will not be equal. So, it won't be a square. I mean, you are getting again 5 parts. But they are not square size. Yeah, 5 minus 2 root 5 and 5 plus 2. Huh, root that's what I am saying. 5 plus 2 root 5. Okay. Now, the thing is here also, the point is, uh, in the beginning you uh, started with uh, triangles, but then finally again you got into the thing of dividing parallel to the sides. There again, you will get a problem. You will have a problem. Okay? So, in this, uh, after this activity, let us look at these levels of thinking. Okay? So, um, definitely as we have seen, if you want to solve this problem, then you have to use 
a Pythagoras theorem. Because that tells you how geometrically you can realize square root of 5 in this case. <laughs> Supposing uh, you teach Pythagoras theorem to people and then you frame a question. You teach Pythagoras theorem meaning you teach what is the statement of the theorem and how it can be proved. And then you set a question in the exam saying state and true Pythagoras theorem which is what we encounter in our school. Now what is the question testing? What thinking ability does the question test? It tests the lowest level of thinking. Framing a teaching students the statement and proof of Pythagoras theorem and then asking them a question, state and prove Pythagoras <coughs> theorem. It only tests the lowest level of thinking, that is memory. In fact, an analysis of various questions in the examination shows most of them fall into the category of questions which test only memory. Supposing we modify this question. We say state and prove Pythagoras theorem and explain its significance. Explain the significance of Pythagoras theorem. Now the student has to write a little bit more. For instance, one significance of Pythagoras theorem is that you can get the square root of any, you can get the square root of any integer by a geometrical means. That is one of the significance of Pythagoras theorem. By application, you can get. So this is a slight, this uh, question tests slightly higher level of thinking. Now, let us look at another question. That is, divide a square piece of paper into five equal squares by applying Pythagoras theorem. Supposing we frame the question like this, which is different from what I have said. I didn't tell you that you must use Pythagoras theorem. In that case, you, even in that case, you uh, came up to a point where you realized you should use Pythagoras theorem, right? You did that, but I didn't give you the hint in the beginning. Supposing you frame the question like this, that applying Pythagoras theorem, divide a square piece of paper into five equal squares. Now this is a relatively difficult problem. But still, a hint has been given, a starting point has been given, and an end point has been told. This particular question tests application or problem solving ability or higher level of thinking than knowing or comprehension or memory and understanding. Suppose I frame the question differently the way I had done it in the beginning. I do not give you the hint that you must use Pythagoras theorem, which is what I have done. So I said that divide a square piece of paper into five equal squares. And I didn't give you any starting point. Now it is an even more difficult problem. The level of thinking that this problem tests is evaluation or critical thinking. Now what is critical thinking? Means looking at an issue or a problem from various angles. Then evaluating each particular angle to see whether it leads you to the solution. And if the evaluation tells you that it will not lead you to the solution, then you discard that approach or angle and then take another approach, different angle. So here, you are attempting multiple ways to solve the problem. This is the characteristic of critical thinking. Because you do not know, you are not been given the starting point. So you are trying to look at things from different angles and try to see whether, you know, grappling, whether you can get to the solution from this side or from that side. So this kind of thinking where you approach an issue from various angles and evaluate each particular angle or point of view to see whether it leads you to a solution and if it doesn't you discard and choose another approach. This is called critical thinking. And even higher level of thinking is creativity. So in the present context, the, an example of creative, creativity would be to think of a problem like this and give it to the students and see how far they get to test their various levels of or thinking or ability of thinking. Thinking of a problem like this, right? You ask people to divide a square piece of paper into five equal parts and then see how far do people get. So give them some time, then after some time give them a hint, okay, you use Pythagoras theorem if you are not getting. Then you see how many more students get to the solution. Then you give further hints like this. So thinking of a problem can be considered an exercise in creativity. It is creativity. 
So this is how, these are the various levels of thinking. In research, we have to operate at the three higher levels. That is, either application or problem solving, or evaluation and critical thinking, or creativity. The lowest level, knowing or memory, and understanding are not sufficient. This point is very important to note because until we have undertaken research, our entire examination system and evaluation system is such that it tests mostly memory, at most understanding. And very rarely application. Very rarely it tests application. I do know that in IIT, uh, we do test application. Okay, the question papers in IIT do test some level of application. An example of an examination which tests application and to some extent critical thinking. To some extent critical thinking and application is the joint entrance exam of IITs, right? It tests ability to apply. So, um, unless we are aware of these various levels of thinking, we will not be able to know how we should prepare ourselves in our research to do better work. Because we are not geared towards application or critical thinking or creativity. So if you understand this, then you will be able to develop these uh, kinds of thinking much better. It does happen that even without knowing these uh, words, problem solving, critical thinking, creativity, just by going through the process with your guide, you may be developing these abilities without your knowledge. But the extent to which this development occurs can be speeded up. And the level to which this development occurs can be increased if you are really aware that these are the various levels. Okay? So for example, Supposing I want to evaluate somebody else's research work. We have said earlier that what is the uh, achievement of a PhD scholar at the end of going through research? One of the things that a PhD scholar should be able to do is to evaluate others' research. Now, how will you be able to evaluate others' research? Basically, you have to see in that work how much of problem solving or application is there, how much critical thinking is there, and how much creativity is there. In a paper, if any of you have read some papers, okay, can you identify sections in the paper which are related to critical thinking, for example, where the critical thinking done by the author comes out? Someone can tell me if, if you have read papers. Very good. Results and discussion. Supposing you are doing some experimental work, you will start with the introduction, then you will present the apparatus and so on. Then you will present the uh, methodology used and then you will come to discussion. Methodology used and you will also present the data, measurement or whatever. And then you will come to results and discussion. This results and discussion section is the one which shows what critical thinking the student has done or the author has done. So by looking at the results and discussion section of the different papers, if you are asked to compare, you can try to judge the level of research that has been done. Okay? So that is one um, aspect that you can see. There can be creativity, for example, in design of an apparatus. Someone might have designed an experiment, a new experiment, to show something. So an awareness of these levels of thinking also enables you to focus on the strengths of your work when you write a paper. Okay? Essentially, what you should bring out in your paper or in your technical work, or your thesis, is application, critical thinking, and creativity. Okay? So therefore, in case you write your thesis, and it has a very long review, and a very short results and discussion section, it will have a negative impact. Even though the thesis may look thick, right? The person who knows how to evaluate research will first try to see the results and discussion section. Let us see what is the person, what is it that the person has done. Okay? So, uh, awareness of these various levels of thinking is the first important thing in uh, developing our own thinking. Let us look at some of the other words which people have used to describe thinking. So styles of thinking. Reproductive thinking means what? Based on similar problems encountered in the past or taught to solve. Again, most of our examination questions and evaluation test reproductive thinking. So, something is taught in the class, a few examples are given, some tutorials are given, and then in the exam you make small modifications of these problems and then see whether the student can 
solve. So mostly it is reproductive thinking. To some extent, it may be application level. As against reproductive thinking, what is required in research is productive thinking. So productive thinking means generate as many alternative approaches as possible. A person is said to be a productive thinker if he or she can generate as many different approaches as possible. Okay? So whenever you look at a problem, immediately, if in your mind, several different approaches come, okay? then you can say that you have an ability to think creatively. All these approaches may or may not be correct, but the point is at least your mind is able to think of different approaches. Then you may discard one by one if it doesn't work. This ability to generate different approaches is one of the important abilities that a good thinker should have. Then people have always uh, also used words such as fluency. So fluent thinking, what does it mean? Generate large quantity of ideas. A person is said to be a fluent thinker if you can generate large quantity of ideas. Then flexible thinking. What is the meaning of flexible thinking? Flexible thinking is one which goes beyond the ordinary and conventional nature of things. So a good researcher should be a fluent and a flexible thinker. He must be a, he or she must be a productive thinker. So now let us come to more practical level. Let us see what are the various ways in which problems are solved. We have considered one example of a problem. Okay, and then we have seen how we approach the solution. Now here, we are going to discuss various strategies. These strategies are uh, fairly general in nature. In other words, they can be applied to any problem. However, it is true that for certain problems, certain strategies may give you solutions quickly or they may give you more effect effective solutions. But first, we must be aware of what are the various strategies that one can adopt to solve problems. Okay, so here I have listed some of the very uh, commonly used strategies. When I say commonly used, uh, let me uh, maybe correct my statement a little bit. These are strategies which, if I utter these words, you will say you know what this means. But as I will show you, surprisingly, we don't apply these strategies in a given problem because we are not aware that this strategy can be applied and it will lead to a solution. So the strategies are representation. So in a given situation, you are given a problem, you draw a diagram to represent the information that is available. And from that diagram, you try to see how you can approach the solution. By reasoning, another way we solve problems is by reasoning, logical reasoning. Third approach is division into sub-problems. So you have a problem, what you do is you divide into smaller problems and you tackle the smaller problem and then you combine your results that you obtained by tackling each small problem to solve the bigger problem. Stretching to the extreme or limiting approaches, using limiting approaches and then trying to see whether solution exists for them. We will consider examples to illustrate these points. Then verbalization. That is, trying to solve a problem by talking about it. It's a very interesting strategy of solving problems. It tells you a psychology of thinking, how we think. If you want to solve a problem, you talk about the problem. After, of course, you have done some thinking. For example, one of our uh, students here came up to give a solution and then as he was explaining, suddenly discovered it won't work. The same thing, same discovery didn't happen when the person was thinking for himself. Okay? So when you are talking about the problem, then you find a solution. It is a very uh, important uh, aspect of the way our mind works that you should know. That is why research scholars are encouraged to give talks or seminars periodically to their colleagues or to the supervisors. You can solve your problems, you can come up with ideas by talking about them. Provided some amount of thinking has gone into the problem. First, a certain amount of thinking should go into the problem. And then you start talking about it. What is interesting about this verbalization strategy of solving problems is, the audience may, not, may or may not understand what you are talking. Right? The audience, the person sitting in front of you may or may not understand what you are talking. But you will get a solution. You will realize, hey, I have got the solution something that I didn't have earlier. 
as a result of my talking about the problem. So it's an interesting um, aspect of our uh, thinking that action stimulates thinking. Action, a physical action. That is why you will find sometimes uh, when people are not getting solutions, they become restless and start walking. Because you feel that, you know, if you walk, then your thinking may be speeded up and yeah. it may open up and so on. This is another example where you are trying to stimulate thinking by action. So of these various approaches, verbalization is a very powerful stimulant for th stimulating your thinking. You can try this uh, approach and see. I have myself uh, got solutions many times while discussing with my student. Okay? Or discussing with someone. The student doesn't understand what I'm discussing. But I get a solution. And I have seen students getting solutions even when I don't understand what the other person is saying. So, um, I will discuss with some examples the um, strategies, namely representation, logical thinking, division into sub-problems, and stretching to the extreme. So, verbalization, we have already seen an example in practice. Okay? 